argue with your mama or not. Can y'all believe that shit? What the fuck do you mean I should be grateful for being in your chair? If you don't have like all the followers, if you haven't done a celebrity, then I don't want to book with you. Why not? Hey boo, hey love, hey sweetie. If I got to DM you to book, to shop, to anything, you don't got to worry about me, literally. And y'all might like me after this video. Y'all might not like me. Y'all might agree what I have to say. Y'all might disagree. girl welcome back to my video if you're new here I'm project Danny if you're returning what's up girl today I'm coming to y'all with a makeup tutorial I got my fresh face going right now as you can see by the title we're doing an unpopular opinion hairstylist and client edition from an ATL hairstylist and y'all might like me after this video y'all might not like me y'all might agree what I have to say y'all might disagree but Whatever you gotta say, leave it in the comments below. I'm interested. If it's positive, if it's negative, I don't wanna hear it. But let's go ahead and get started, y'all. I'm gonna sanitize my hands first before I touch my face. And before we get started, I want to show y'all my hair. Even though it's a little old, I had this hairstyle for probably like three weeks going on a month now, but my braids still look real good. And I want to show y'all my hair my curly hair from my hair collection dropping very 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 soon the fantasy factory co so yeah get into the hair because it's giving if y'all see me looking at my phone it's because i literally typed up all my unpopular opinions on my phone so i'm gonna be using that to reference but um my outfit is from wait a minute march my girl my girl my girl i got the I think it's just a crop dress on. My fragrance of the day is Eau Malone Peony and Blush Suede, the cologne. It comes in a double pack and it is from Sephora. So before we even get started, girl. Oh, mm, okay. Now I'm ready, now I'm ready, now I'm ready, now I'm ready, now I'm ready. So first, we are gonna start off with my eyebrows. So let me tell y'all the process of my makeup. The process of how it, the process of how I do my makeup is primer, eyebrows, foundation, conceal eyebrows, fill in eyebrows, highlight, contour, set a spray. That's it. My process is pretty simple. I don't do too much to my face because it's not really needed. But I'm done rambling. Let's go ahead and jump into these unpopular opinions. So, if you, well, if you don't know, I am located in Georgia, probably like 40 minutes from Atlanta, Georgia, 35, 40. And y'all, being a hairstylist in Atlanta is definitely not for the week. That's when I'm going to start all of this off with. And I am not only going to be coming for hairstylists in this video, but I'm also going to be talking about clients too because it goes both ways it's not this isn't a one-sided um this isn't a one-sided topic conversation unpopular opinion number one is i feel like to eliminate the i guess the stigma of like being scared to book with somebody new or not trusting hairstylists I feel like both hairstylists and clients should use discernment on both ends. And what I mean by that is for clients, if you know your hairstylist isn't being, if you just book with somebody and she's being rude, she's not really being that friendly, she got an attitude, you know, the typical, typical. If she's doing all that, then you should be using your discernment to tell yourself like, okay, this girl I'm not feeling her vibe, so I need to go find somebody else in a good enough time. Why do y'all still, it's one thing to book with somebody and then like realize after booking that they're not, you know, they don't practice good customer service, but to still actually go get your hair done by them is insane to me. Like that's so dumb. Why would you think their energy would be any different in person? You know, if they were rude over the phone, if they were rude through the DM, then they're rude 
that's just them. That's just the type of person that they are. So I feel like clients should really use their discernment. And if somebody's giving you a bad vibe off the jump initially, don't get your hair done by them. It's that simple. People still be thinking like, oh, well, maybe she'll be nicer. No, just don't get your hair done by her. And the same thing for hairstylists. If clients are giving you a bad vibe through text, DM, after they book, whatever the case is, before you even part the comb through their hair, it ain't nothing to send a deposit back and just say, hey, I don't think I'm the right hairstylist for you. Here's your deposit back. I hope you can find someone that could do it. Simple as that, leave it at that because going back and forth with people or knowing that somebody has a bad vibe and still performing a service on them, that is also insane. And I feel like to eliminate all this scamming you, people being rude, people not doing your hair correctly, use your discernment. If you're getting a bad feeling before she even part the comb through your hair, don't go. It's that simple, it's literally that simple. Unpopular um, opinion number two is I feel like there's a lot of hairstylists or there's a lot of people that are doing hair But there are not a lot of people that have a passion for doing hair and when I say that I mean like For example me like I do hair because it's truly something that I love to do like it's truly something that gives me joy It's something that makes me excited and it's not a drag to do it. I don't dread getting up going to do my clients hair like it's not a drag for me it's very exciting i get excitement out of it i meet really good women so i don't feel like that's the same for everybody especially in atlanta i feel like a lot of people have um made it seem like hair is the quickest way to go up and it isn't it really isn't being a hairstylist is one of the most judgmental jobs in the world and you know we take a lot of shit i'm just being straight up we take a lot of shit and you just have to have a certain kind of heart you know you have to have a certain kind of heart a certain kind of passion to be in this industry and everybody thinks like yeah the money might look good but what you have to deal with you need to make sure you're passionate about what you do Popular opinion number three is I do feel like the market is oversaturated. I'm going to be the one to say it, argue with your mama or not. The market is very much saturated. And I'm just speaking for in Atlanta, y'all, because I am an Atlanta hairstylist. So I don't know about Texas, Miami, New York. I don't know about none of them other places. I'm just talking about in Atlanta. I feel like the market is very much oversaturated and it's very much oversaturated with people that either love what they do or people that are only doing it for the money. And I just wish that wasn't the case, you know, because a lot of y'all are only jumping in it for the money and that's not fair, you know, because you messing it up for the good hairstylists like me, you know? The people that actually love to do what they do. So I very much feel like the market is very oversaturated and People don't, I feel like people nowadays, the hair culture, nobody believes in good hair care or good customer service. Like, wh whatever happens to your hair after you leave my chair don't got nothing to do with me. And I kind of get the vibe even before I started doing my own hair and I used to go to these big top stylists. I would always just feel like it was one of those, like, you should be grateful you're in my chair. What the fuck do you mean I should be grateful for being in your chair? I pay my money just like everybody else and I should be treated with respect, you know? And that brings me into unpopular opinion number three is that I feel like respect should go both ways from the client and from the hairstylist perspective because girl, like, if the respect ain't there, then why are you here? You know, if you don't respect me, if you don't respect my craft, why am I even doing your hair? And if I don't respect you as a client, as a human being, then, you know, why? what are we really doing? And I know this is gonna ruffle some feathers, especially the people that actually do this, but I feel like selling your vendor means that your vendor's hair is trash. That's just my opinion. And I'm gonna give y'all a backstory. I purchased a 
um, vendor. And if you don't know what that means, purchasing a vendor just basically means that you're looking, you're a entrepreneur that's looking to start selling hair or start selling wigs, whether that's wholesale, pre-order, ready on hand, ready to wear, whatever. That just means you're looking for someone to supply your hair and you go to another hair company and you basically just pay for the sauce. You pay for their vendor, they give you the number. Nine times out of 10, all they do is just send you a WhatsApp number. And um, you contact the people and then, you know, get a sample, move forward from there. So probably last year, literally this time last year, um, I decided that I wanted to start um, having hair available for my clients. Now, I don't say selling hair. I just wanted hair available or if a client could not find a hair company, then they could, you know, purchase their hair from me. So I um, reached out to this one really, really big hairstylist in Atlanta, y'all. Really, really big hairstylist. And I should have known it was a red flag when before she even posted that she was selling her vendor, she posted that she was about to stop selling hair completely in that like it just got too overwhelming for her. It was too much. She couldn't deal with it. So she was selling her um, hair vent. I mean, she was stop going to stop selling hair. Excuse me. She was she made the post saying she was going to stop doing hair. And then maybe like a week later, she made another post that said, hey, I'm selling my vendor from so 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 hair company. If you want it, it's five hundred dollars. DM me to get it. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, damn, like that is that is a lot of money for you know just for somebody to send you a phone number. I still gotta buy samples. I still gotta you know get my branding, do all of that. So I'm thinking in my head like, damn, like five hundred dollars is a lot for a hair vendor. But I want to reinvest in myself. I want to do shit big, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Just buy the vendor. Maybe like a week later goes past, I DM her, I reach out to her, and I explain to her that I have had a horrible experience with buying vendors in the past. Whether that's I'll buy a vendor from a really big hair company and then they'll send me the number and I'll order the hair from that vendor and the hair is literally trash. Like it's nothing like the hair that they advertise the actual hair company advertised. So I just felt like a lot of times I pretty much got got and people was charging me ass amounts of money for just a little phone number and I wasn't actually getting their direct vendor. I was getting like a vendor, you know, they use second hand, a vendor that they used to have, a vendor who hair used to be good but now it's trash so I had explained to her like yeah I done had a horrible experience with vendors and I'm kind of skeptical about buying yours but there's anything you know you could reassure me so you know I want to make my purchase and she was like yeah I um, completely understand um, my vendor sells this hair they offer this they offer drop shipping 24-hour um, customer service, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, she was painting a really good picture for me. So, fast forward, buy the vendor, maybe like four or five months later, I buy three wigs, y'all. Three wigs. If you know, you know. Like, three frontal, three 13 by 6 HD frontal wigs, and all of them were over 28 inches. So, you, you could do the math. You could do the math when it comes to that. I did $500 for the vendor, and I probably spent closely around $1,200 on divided by three different wigs. So, yeah, more of the story, I put the hair in. The hair is absolutely trash. The lace was given, yes. The lace was given scalp, but the actual hair shed like a fucking cat. It shed like a cat. I kid you not. So, yeah, I basically, I said all of that to say, y'all, that I believe that people, hairstylists, companies, whoever, businesses that sell hair vendors, they're selling them because they're trash. They're selling them because it's something wrong. There's no, and I feel like there's no exclusivity in the hair extension industry anymore. You know, back in the day, I remember like, Back in the day when I was in high school, you know, you could never buy a hair vendor from a hair company, especially a hair company that sold really, really good hair because it was nothing but exclusivity. You know, it was a if you know, you know type of situation. They wasn't trying to give everybody their hair. So, yeah, so if you're selling a vendor nine times out of ten, I'm going to think that is trash.
If you have to DM somebody to book, immediately, immediate red flag. Like, I feel like that's a that's something that you should know, and it's something that should be universal. But I know some people still, I guess, I don't know. Some people still do that, but I don't believe in that. If I gotta DM you to book, to shop, to anything, you don't gotta worry about me, literally. Hey boo, hey love, hey sweetie. Just call me by my name. I don't like that. And I know I'm not the only beauty professional that could vouch for this. I do not like that. I feel like, and then nobody, I understand if it's an elder. If you're older than me, and I'm talking about older than me. If you in 30s and up, and you saying, hey sweetie. I, okay, I, I, could, I could understand that because you're an elder, you know. But if you two years younger or you two years older, younger, whatever, and you doing the hey love, hey boo, me personally, I don't, I turn away clients like that. Even if it's not intentional, I turn away clients like that because I don't do that to people. I don't, hey boo, hey boo. And it's just as simple as something as, hey girl, hey Danny, you know, call me by my name. Don't belittle me by calling me love, sweetie, boo, like, no, I just don't do that. I don't do that to people, so I don't want that done to me. Period, point blank. If the stylist is late, they should take some money off your service. I believe so, especially now. Now, I will say this. If the stylist made it clear to you, like, hey, you know, I'm just be 10 minutes late, or hey, I'm just be a few minutes late, and they let you know in a good enough a time, yes, I do feel like, they shouldn't have to give your, you know, some money back. But if they tell you, like, as soon as you pull up, she's like, oh, I'm going to be 15 minutes late, girl. Oh, I'm at Starbucks. Oh, I'm at this. Oh, I'm at that. Then, yeah. As soon as I sit in your chair, we need to be discussing, like, 15 off, 10 off, 20 off. Because, nah, babe, it's not giving. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting so carried away with talking. I'm not even doing the makeup. But I just filled in my eyebrows. And y'all know my eyebrows are thin, so... I pretty much have to make them into a shape. And this is the shape that I do. And y'all, I'm in the process of growing my eyebrows out. So if you're wondering those extra hairs, chill on me. Hairstylists that have under 5,000 followers, 1,000 followers, those are the underdogs. If I literally, like, before I even got a thousand followers or whatever before I even got any of that like I was very very consistent because of course I was trying to grow my community I was trying to grow my following but I just wish you know there wasn't such a negative stigma with hairstylists that have under you know a certain amount of followers I feel like that stigma is so dumb um and it's stupid because a lot of those and then what y'all got to realize is a lot of these hairstylists that have, you know, these low amount of followers, but their work speaks for itself and their consistency and their customer service speaks for themselves, then why wouldn't you want to book with them? They could be way more personable with you. They're not going to be late. They're not going to have an attitude. Like, I don't understand. Like, you know, and I wish more people would just eliminate that stigma of, Oh, if you don't have like all the followers, if you haven't done a celebrity, then I don't want to book with you. Why not? Like, you should want to book with me. But, I mean, we could debate in the comments about that one, so. You shouldn't expect celebrity hairstylists to be personable. And that's just straight up. Like, celebrity hairstylists, of course, they have their top dog clients that pay, you know, well over enough for their service and then they have their regular clients but i can nine times out of ten guarantee you that them regular clients like if a you got to think about it if a celebrity hairstylist you know done did a celebrity they done got their clientele up and they have six to eight clients a day they don't have time to be sitting here asking you oh how's your daughter how's it is how's it that how's it that and i think that's the issue a lot of y'all be booking with these hairstylists thinking that i guess you're gonna get a friend or you're gonna get you know somebody to talk to but 
These women got people. They got clients behind you. They don't got time to be being all personable. Now, I know all of them are not like that, but the few that I have booked with, like, literally, the only thing we've said to each other is, hey, might say how you doing? How are you getting your hair? Baby hair or not? Curls are straight? And that's it. Like, we never got anywhere deeper into that. It was never like, a, oh, how old are you? Oh, uh, what you do for a living? Like, and I didn't expect that from them. Yeah, you don't got time to be talking. You can only work. So, yeah. Don't expect celebrity hairstylists to be personable. They can't. They're so busy, they can't. That's why you should trust the people that have under 1K because those are the people that are going to give you, you know, an actual experience, not just a service. I do your hair, you give me the money, and I go. Or you go. You should book with people in your price range. You should book with people in your price range. And I'm going to say it again. You should book with people in your price range. The trend on TikTok, and I've never done this because I don't have time to be arguing with people. Like, you know how the clients will be like, oh, spend a day with me. And then they'll probably service like four girls and they'll put the price of the service on the screen. Then people be in them comments going crazy. I would never pay that much. I would never do that. I would never. $300 is dumb. I would never pay that. Y'all smoke a dick if y'all, okay, brokey. You just don't got it. And that's okay. That's okay. But just publicly doing that is very corny to me. It's giving corn lady. If that price is too expensive for you, that's you. There's people in this world that'll pay it. And that's what y'all got to understand. Like, some people, they don't care about their hair. Some people don't care about their hair to the point where they'll pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to keep it up and that's okay there's a hairstylist out there for you babe there is but going under other people post and comment saying oh i would never i would never pay that amount of money okay brokey don't and go find you somebody who you would pay for but being up under my comments like that literally gets you nowhere i just feel like you should book with people that offer what you are looking for and you know you just have all these stipulations then you have that right as a client you do but you also have that right to find somebody that works for you and if somebody if you try someone that doesn't work for you it's okay to cut them off and keep on moving or it is okay to politely address them like hey i didn't like what you did or hey I didn't like what you said or I didn't like how you did my hair addressing them in person but going on social media dragging the hairstylist and then still booking with them you look like a clown and even me like me I'm a hairstylist I don't mind spending 700 800 900 dollars on a wig but that's me that's me and I know a lot of people be like oh I've never paid that that's a, that's my rent that's my this that's my that that's my car note that's my this okay girl okay go find you a little $200 wig put it on you be happy and I be happy and that's that but trying to drag somebody for what they spend their money on is stupid or trying to drag somebody for what they charge is dumb. It's dumb. Y'all don't go into Sephora and grab the Tom Ford Sole Blanc and say, why would Tom Ford charge this much? No, dummy. You still go stand in the checkout line and you go buy it. So don't come in my comments or don't come to me trying to make it seem like I charge too much. There is a hairstylist for everybody. If there is a certain service that you are looking for, you need to get a lineup, get you a nice little lineup of stylists that all do that service and compare. See which one works for you. But just going to find one stylist and putting all your trust in them, no. Like, no. It just, it doesn't give at all. For my foundation, I'm applying the Estee Lauder. And this is in the color 5W15 Cinnamon. And I also use this LA Pro Girl, sorry y'all, <laughs> this LA Pro Girl foundation mixing pigment. And I got this from the beauty supply store and I really like this because um, in the summer I like to tan. So I'm typically this color, but as you can see, 
I'm not that right now. And I get really light in the winter. So instead of having to buy foundation after foundation after foundation, instead I just use my mixing pigment and you just use your foundation, your concealer, and you just mix it with a drop and it pretty much brings that color down. And you can use however much as you need, but I love this stuff. So I just had to make sure I throw that in there. The next unpopular opinion, y'all honestly forgot the number, so I'll put it on the screen, but the next unpopular opinion is the norm of today's hair culture has definitely changed. And when I say that, I mean like, of course, in 2005 and 2009, you were able to just walk into a hair salon and get a sew-in you were able to purchase beauty supply store hair and you know you still get the look you want well that was 2009 2005 we're in 2022 now so yes the norm of today's hair culture has changed and i mean that as like some people you have to come wash and blow dried um you have to put down a deposit you know i don't people don't take walk-ins anymore and you know stuff like that but i feel like everything in this world is changing including the hair culture so it's really just something you just have to deal with like i know a lot of there's a lot of debates on instagram and tiktok i would never go to somebody that that makes me come wash and blow dry why do i have to do my hair to go get my hair done okay pool that's you but that's the norm that's yeah pretty much the norm of today's hair culture and if you don't agree with it again go find a stylist that offers what you're looking for but continuously complaining about it you look like a clown you literally do and in addition to today's hair culture changing i also feel like the tone of the client and the hairstylist have changed like before in the past you know going to your hair appointment was fun going to your hair appointment you knew you was gonna get a little tea you know it's gonna get a little drama you knew he's gonna cry he was gonna laugh he was gonna have a good time and he's gonna leave with your hair done looking good but i feel like now it's more of a hairstylist make it seem like oh like i don't know i can't i can't really explain it i just know what it feels like like the entitlement the I'm sorry y'all my camera died always but yes I definitely feel like the tone of hairstylists has definitely changed in some in some of them not all of them but you know I just feel like they're not really happy anymore they're not happy the entitlement and the ego and all of that just ends up being tied to it and it just doesn't give a good experience and I feel like a lot of the like a lot of the debates I see on TikTok and Instagram about like oh my hairstylist fuck me up or my hairstylist this my hairstylist that a lot of it just be miscommunication and I feel like that's one of the issues of the norm in today's culture communication is gone like it's either you're saying too much or you're not saying enough and I hate that so I just know me personally with my clients like I over communicate and some of them might think it's annoying some of them might think like oh like why does this girl keep texting me but I literally just like to get all the kinks and everything settled before you even sit in my chair so that is just a a clear understanding on both ends of what's going on you know nobody is confused and if somebody has a question you know it's a judgment free zone to ask and I feel like that is not the case in today's culture <laughs> the next unpopular opinion and i know this one gonna ruffle some feathers baby it's gonna ruffle some feathers okay so i'm about to go in with my hula benefit and i just like to go at the top sorry i'm looking in this mirror i like to go at the top and i seen a girl on tiktok she goes like curved right above that cheekbone. The next unpopular opinion is, I feel like Amazon, AliExpress, Ali Pearl, any of them places, y'all put way too much trust in them wigs, in that hair, in them tape-ins, in them micro-links, 
why? Why are y'all? And let's make something very, very clear. Wearing hair extensions is a luxury. It's not a need. So let's go ahead and get that out the way. Wearing hair extensions is a luxury. And with that being said, you with luxury comes with a price. So trying to find a cheaper route, and I've known we've all been through that stage, you know, of buying the Amazon hair, of buying the AliExpress hair. We all have been through that stage, whether you want to admit it or not. But, you know, y'all can't be expecting Arrogant Tay, Jonathan, all these people results with these cheap ass wigs. These cheap ass wigs, cheap ass hair, and I don't like it. I don't like it. The girls are buying Amazon tapings. Can y'all believe that shit? Amazon tapings. And I know tapings is tapings has been around for forever, first of all. Tapings have been around for forever. Just the black people kind of just, you know, hopped on the wave. And I feel like tapings is a style where, you know, you need to have a trusted hairstyle, a trusted hair care professional, not even a hairstylist, a trusted licensed cosmetologist to be installing those in your hair. Because you know, with the wrong application, with the wrong removal, you could really like end up with a bald head, end up with no hair patches in your head. So the fact that y'all are going out and y'all are buying these cheap ass AliExpress, Ali Pearl, Amazon tapings is just wild to me. And then y'all are going home and y'all are installing them on the, on yourself. <laughs> like, stop it. Stop it. And then as soon as your hair fall out, you want to blame everybody in the world but you. Nah, babe. Turn that finger back to yourself. Because you did it. AliExpress, Amazon, Ali Pearl. None of that hair is of good quality, even if they tell you it's good quality, even if they show you a picture and say that it's good quality, their hair is not good quality. Whether it's a closure, a frontal, bundles, any type of wig, tapings, any of that. The lace does not lay right, the hair does not hold a curl correctly, the hair does not stay straight, they be putting fibers in that hair, it's not even all you know the quality that they even told you that it is so i just feel like y'all gotta stop y'all have to stop and that hair doesn't even last long anyways you could wear a amazon wig every day for a month and i guarantee you or you could try to wear it for a month and i guarantee you after that two and a half week mark it's gonna be time to take that thing off because you done parted it in every direction. The bald is fronting. Like, it just don't give, y'all. It don't give. Stop, stop it, stop. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter Foundation in the color 4.5 Medium. But, like I was saying, I feel like experience will take you places a license can't and i know that's definitely gonna ruffle some feathers because everybody wants to go to you know a licensed cosmetologist nowadays and i'm speaking from somebody that doesn't have their cosmetology degree yet cosmetology license yet i'm getting that degree first then i'm gonna go to hop over to the license but from everything that i've learned you know from doing hair solely based off experience is I definitely feel like you cannot learn that in a book. You cannot learn that in a class. You literally just have to put yourself out there and do it. And I'm thankful for my journey and I'm thankful that, you know, I was able to experience the things that I have so that when I do go to cosmetology school, I kind of pretty much got a background, you know? I pretty much got a background. And I, I know of many licensed cosmetologists that as soon as they got their degree, as soon as they got their license, they were like, okay, what's next, you know? And I feel like for somebody that's already been in the hair game, and I guess you could say unofficially since they don't have a license, they learn things and they're able to go through things that you cannot learn, you know, in hair school. And experience will definitely take you places a license just can't. And I'm proud for that and of course, you always need a license at the end of the day because you need your paperwork to follow you. But what I'm saying is you're going to learn way more throwing yourself out there than just running to 
a cosmetology school. Now, don't be out here fucking people up now. But you're still able to learn a lot of things solely based off experience that you cannot learn at a hair school, I believe. This is two unpopular opinions tied into one, but I feel like, well, we all know Number one, we're in a pandemic. Number two, we're entering a recession. And number three, we've been dealing with inflation for pretty much all of 2022. So arguing with somebody about their prices, arguing, arguing with somebody about their prices is crazy to me, y'all. Like, y'all have to stop. Y'all have to remember, like, you pull up to Burger King, you pull up to McDonald's, the nugget, the 10 piece nugget is no longer 99 cent. It's $1.25. Everybody's going up, y'all. It's inflation. What do you expect? Everyone is going up. And with that, I'm going in with my concealer right here just so I could get a very sharp contour. And I kind of just did this crooked, but whatever. Yes, we all know that. We're in, we're going through a lot right now as a country. We all know that. So, you know, be patient, be kind with your beauty professionals, with your hairstylists, with your nail techs, MUAs, estheticians, all that. Be patient with them, y'all. If somebody's going up on their prices, it's a reason. They're not doing it to be envious. They're not doing it to get over on people. It's a reason, y'all. I kid you not, a one bottle of Pump It Up Spritz, y'all know. Pump it up spritz, one bottle of that. If you go, well, if you go to a beauty supply store in Atlanta, one bottle is over $3, y'all. I remember when pump it up spritz literally used to be $1.99. I literally vividly remember that, like when it used to be $1.99. A price is going up, rent going up. Yesterday's price is not today's price. People are raising their prices. That doesn't, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Life is just changing, y'all. When you look at things from a business owner perspective, you're able to know that you have to charge your worth. You have to charge your worth. And your profit, you have to be able to profit, y'all. The next unpopular opinion is going to a hairstylist and telling them all your business is very dumb to me now if this is somebody you trust if this is somebody you've been going to for a very very long time you trust them with your personal life your personal business that's different but if this is your first time booking with somebody and you know y'all are just making conversation to get to know each other and you jump that boundary and you start overly overly sharing and doing all that that isn't a good sign from a hairstylist perspective like that isn't and i know that's pretty much been the norm like oh you go to your hairstylist and you vent but let's get one thing straight i am a hairstylist not a therapist if you want therapy you go find you a therapist and you vent to her but venting to your hairstylist and not even knowing them is dumb to me because you don't know who that girl know you don't know who like you just don't know so why would you go telling all your business to this random girl or this random boy just contouring my nose y'all hopefully y'all are still with me with this makeup tutorial it's gonna come together it might look a little funky now but my makeup always looks like a little eh when i'm doing it and then afterwards once everything comes together it be given the last unpopular opinion y'all and I'm gonna leave this one on a positive note, is be true to your art. Be true to your art. Being a hairstylist or being a beauty professional, period, you're a creative at the end of the day. Regardless of what label people try to put you under, you're creative at the end of the day. Be creative, you know? I also feel like in the hair industry, creativity kinda dimmed its light a little bit and I wish it would come back. So yes, just be true to your art. Um, if you see something you like, don't necessarily copy it. Just do it in your own way, you know? Or if you see that people aren't doing anything, try it out and do it. You might be the first person to do it and you'll be the trendsetter. So yes, I just feel like creativity in the hair industry has definitely 
declined and I really wish for it to come back you know I really do wish for it to come back about to finish up the rest of this face it's not even much left it's just eyebrows my lashes and I'm gonna come back on camera and close this video out I'm just about to line my under eye with this eyeliner. And I always have to do it with my eyes closed, y'all. That's the only way it works. When I go get my makeup done and they try to do it with your eyes open, I'm like, girl, let me close my eye for this part. Now I'm about to go in with my RuPaul palette. This is actually a eyeshadow palette that my aunt got for me some years ago. But this color right here, y'all, mother, this color right here, I cannot find a blush this color. So I've literally been using the um, eyeshadow as blush. And it's super pigmented, so I don't go on with a lot. But I really like the orange eyeshadow look. I mean, the orange contour look that everyone's kind of doing nowadays. Instead of using pink, use orange. I think it's very cute. And for this entire look, y'all, I pat my makeup into my face. I don't swipe it. I don't do none of that. I pat. Pat, pat, pat. Now I'm about to go in with my Pretty Perfect Experience lip liner and lipstick in the color Rosé. I'll see. And I've literally been trying to work on my lip. You see? <laughs> I've literally been trying to work on my lip game because I just love, like I have big lips. They're one of like my favorite features. And I know this video kind of got off topic, y'all. No? I'm going in with my Milk Hydro Grip Refreshing Spray and then my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Spray. I like to go in with my Hydro Grip first. Boom. Then my airbrush spray, I go OD on this spray because for some reason this spray like just melts all my makeup together and just makes it look really, really seamless like I went and got it done, so. So yeah, like I literally spray my face till it's soaking wet. I'm gonna come back when my face is dry, my lashes is on, and we will close out this video. Okay y'all, my setting spray has dried. Everything has melted, it's given flawless, it's given just walked out of a makeup appointment, period. So now I'm about to put on my lashes. I would tell y'all where I got these lashes from, but they're two different brands that I stacked together probably a month ago. I've been wearing these same strips for a month. So if I can find the name of them, I'll put them in the description box below. If y'all don't know, I still use 30 second glue to put on strip lashes. I know you're not supposed to do that, but duo don't work for me, so. Disregard the makeup on my arm, y'all. Okay, time for this second one. Woo. So. Mm. 
phone. I feel like they look pretty good. What y'all think? Yes, y'all, this is the end of this video. Hopefully, I did not ruffle too many people's feathers. Hopefully, I didn't offend anybody. This was just my opinions coming from an Atlanta hairstylist to Atlanta hairstylists and clients and clients and hairstylists, wherever, wherever you're watching this. So I really appreciate you for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button below and also subscribe to my channel as I always do hair content and I'm always putting you girls on to the game. Hopefully I didn't offend y'all for real. And please leave your comments below of what you thought about this video, any opinions you have, any topics you want me to talk about in the future, leave them down below. Also follow me on Instagram and also follow me on TikTok because I'm always on TikTok, girl. So make sure you keep up with me on there and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.